it's all here for Cobbin's big fat ass. Oh. Do British people count as an ethnicity for hate crimes? Nah. nah. Sweet. You know, they say that South Park has changed a lot over the years, but if there's one thing that's always been true, it's that everybody hates Pip. Oh yeah? I bet I can spit in his hair. These days, people might not think about Pip all that much, given that he isn't really around anymore, but the truth is that hating him is actually baked into the DNA of the show, because its origins go all the way back to a time before South Park even had a first season. It goes back to the original, unaired pilot of the show. Hello, gentlemen. Any of you blokes know what's for lunch today? Lunchy munchies? Hmm? You see, Pip was one of the earliest ideas that Trey Parker and Matt Stone had for South Park. And I don't just mean the character, I also mean the episode. From day one, they wanted to take Pip, the protagonist of Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, and use him as a character in South Park. And they wanted to eventually do an episode that retold that novel in their own South Parky way. We had the character of Pip from the very, very beginning of South Park. The very first, the pilot episode, we always, for some reason, had Pip in there. And we, we talked about doing this from the very beginning. We're like, we should just take that little Pip kid and basically just do Great Expectations South right. Park style. Mm -hmm. Look, it's not exactly a surprise that Pip is one of the most unpopular characters in the show. He's lame, he sounds stupid, and, well, there's no easy way of saying this, but... He's British. He is a punching bag character by design. And South Park is no stranger to punching bag characters. It's got Butters, Scott Malkinson. But unlike most other punching bag characters in the show, Pip is unique because he's so lame and so uncool that even when he's being made fun of or tortured on screen as part of an episode, people still don't really want to see him. They might find the abuse funny, but they don't seem to get any satisfaction out of his existence beyond that. Which is probably why he was literally killed off by Trey Parker and Matt Stone nearly 50 years ago. Cherry Ho! My name is Pip. I would like to see if you wouldn't mind not smashing our little town to bits. Now, I think the hate for Pip is pretty justified. Even though I do find his lameness kind of funny, he's just not the strongest character in the show, and there's no way around that. But there is one thing about him that everybody gets wrong. His episode does not suck. Everywhere I go online, people say that Pip is the worst episode of South Park. Even in the comments of my last video, which had nothing to do with this episode, I got a comment about it. And this is an injustice that I simply will not stand for. So, I think it's time that I set the record straight. Not only will I prove that Pip is not the worst episode of South Park, but I'll show you why it's actually a good episode. Then I'll do all of this in a story that I like to call Pip, an episode of South Park that I like. Now, first of all, let's just get this part out of the way. This is obviously not even close to the worst episode of South Park. Like, come on, seriously? You're trying to tell me that the Jack Officeorus episode isn't worse? That some of the Tegrity Farm stuff isn't worse? Please. That whole thing is just a non-conversation to me. No. I'm not here to discuss which bad episodes are obviously worse. I'm here to help you discover the truth. That it's time to shed your false biases and finally become based and pip-pilled. One up, I'm a cold motherfucker like Crow Cop. Then once I start, I don't stop. I'm a solo operator, no co-op. I'm a player terminated like shortstop. I'm a cold motherfucker like Crow Cop. Then once I start, I don't First and foremost, let's cover the most important part of any South Park episode. The writing. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the main focus of the writing should be divided into two main categories, its story and its humor. Obviously, in this case, the story of the episode is just great expectations, sort of. But while you might think that having a story already written for them makes Trey Parker and Matt Stone's jobs easier, I'd argue that it's actually a limitation that they had to overcome with excellent humor. And I believe that for two reasons. One, Great Expectations is like a 500-page novel, and they have to find a way to fit it and all of its original characters into a 22-minute episode. And two, they have to make a Charles Dickens novel feel fresh and funny like a South Park episode, which is not an easy task. So to me, the fact that they managed to pull this off in any capacity at all makes it one of the most tightly written episodes in the early years of South Park. I mean, think about it. Nearly every scene moves the story along at a super quick pace while managing to throw in multiple jokes at a time. Like take the opening scene, for example. Right off the bat, the episode establishes Pip's upbeat character and tragic home life in a way that's so absurd it's hilarious. Sister is still taking very good care of me. She just loves to smack me in the face and tell me I'm worthless. Oh, we have such fun together. Rarely a second is wasted in this episode, and it leverages the fact that you're watching a cartoon by telling its story in the most ridiculous way possible. Kind of like how all of the characters are bizarre parodies of old-timey British people, or how the plot advances in completely nonsensical ways. Oh, look here. 
I'm going and made a metal newspaper. Shut up, you silly net! What the hell are we supposed to do with a metal newspaper? Well, for starters, we can look in the wanted and see if we can find Pippa Joel. Now, some people might argue that in these first two minutes or so, the story is kind of boring. And I'd agree with those people, but I'm not a little bitch. And I can wait more than two seconds for an inciting incident to happen. Like seriously, give it a minute. The interesting part of the story literally starts in the next scene. Estella, play with this boy. With him? But he's just a commoner. But you can break his heart. First of all, I just want to say, I f***ing love this character design. She looks creepy, she acts creepy, her voice is so cartoonishly evil, and they pretty immediately establish that she's got some kind of nefarious plot in the works. Now I'll be the first to admit it. On its own, I can see why breaking Pip's heart wouldn't make for a very compelling story. But, the lack of motivation provided and the episode's quick pacing up until this point almost implies that the story will have to go deeper than just that to fill out its runtime. And I'd argue that the implication of something missing creates a sense of intrigue about where the plot will go from there that the episode absolutely delivers on in its third act. And in my opinion, that is a hallmark of good writing. Also, I kind of just skipped over this scene earlier, but when Pip first meets Estella, we get some of the greatest insults I've ever heard in all of South Park. This way, you pathetic squirt of vaginal discharge. This way, you beef-witted shriveled up monkey's penis. Up here, you gamey mass of baby vomit. Like, goddamn, those insults are so good, I feel like I could just call it a good episode based on that alone. They kind of remind me of, like, the type of stuff you'd hear in this South Park movie, only classier. Anyways, I've already mentioned that this episode does a great job of parodying old-timey British people, but none of those parodies are better than the character Pocket. Oh, what fun it is to splash about in the fountain. You there, the frowning little boy. I bet you can't jump on my back. Go on, then try and jump on my back. Pocket is easily one of my favorite one-off characters in all of South Park. The man is funny by default, just by the way that he talks. But my favorite of all is a scene later in the episode where they use Pocket to deliver some exposition, only they do it in this like classic Monty Python-esque style that is so funny. Now, onto Miss Havisham. She was raised by a wealthy father and grew up to be a somewhat of a spoiled brat. And now I might mention, Pip, that in London is not the custom to put the knife in the mouth. Oh dear, I'm terribly sorry. Not at all, I'm sure. Anyway, Miss Havisham grew up to be a lovely young lady and soon a man came along, which gets me to the cruel part of the story, merely breaking off my dear Pip to remark that a dinner napkin should never be placed into the tumbler. Sorry, sorry, not at all, I'm sure. Something about the way he delivers that line just f kills me. And the last one of the scene is the best one. And the story ends, Pip, with me suggesting that one should never pull out the wee wee and check it for scabs whilst at the table. Terribly sorry, Pocket. Not at all, I'm sure. This is the kind of thing that I feel this episode excels at. It mixes the source material with absurdity and foul humor in a way that only Trey and Matt could have come up with. One of my favorite scenes in this episode, before it goes completely insane at the end, is when Pip has finally become a gentleman and meets Estella at the ball and asks her to dance. First of all, the dancing animation alone is hilarious. But then, while Pip and Estella are talking, this part happens and it gets me every time. Hey Estella, let's get out of here. All right, Steve, just one moment. Who? Who is that? That is Steve. He is 17 and has a cough. It's just so perfectly out of place for the story. It's f great and I love it. And it leads directly into the final chapter of the episode where Trey and Matt have taken it upon themselves to fix the ending of Great Expectations to make it more like Charles Dickens always wanted it to be by adding robot monkeys and the Genesis device. Let the transformation begin. I mean, what else do you want out of a retelling of Great Expectations? This is entertaining storytelling at its finest. You got an evil mad scientist woman trying to steal the body of her young daughter. She's got robot monkeys and acid spit. <laughs> they kill 25 baby bunnies. Pocket dies of hepatitis B. It's beautiful. Seriously, it's mind blowing to me that I even have to defend this episode at all, given how much gold is jammed into this thing. Plus, I haven't even mentioned the fact that it's partially narrated by the legendary Malcolm McDowell. Hello, I'm a British person. This episode should be a fan favorite. This episode should be drowning in pussy right now. And hell, if the humor wasn't already proof of its quality, and how about the fact that it accomplishes the impossible? Yeah, that's right. This episode makes Pip slightly less annoying. I mean, think about it. We're talking about a character that has completely failed to resonate with audiences, including myself, in pretty much every other episode. But here, they actually managed to make him into slightly more of a sympathetic character. Because of that, he actually manages to carry the 
episode without it coming off as unwatchable as he usually does. That, in my opinion, is proof alone that Pip is a good episode. However, I can't just talk about what makes this episode good without diving into why people hate it. So now that we've covered the good, for the sake of balance and comparison, let's take a look at why everybody hates Pip the episode. So the first thing I found when looking this up was a video by a YouTuber called Blooms that goes over why Pip sucks as a character and also why the episode sucks. Now I haven't watched Blooms before but I can see that it's got a lot of subscribers and it seems like South Park is his main topic so hopefully this will just capture all of the criticisms in one place and make my job easier. So let's watch the part of his video that critiques the episode. So the joke here is that she calls Pip names and beats him up. Man, what a fresh and interesting concept that has not been done before. Yes, that is how South Park works, correct? Well, guess what? We get a minute and a half long exposition dump from Pocket, with the only joke being his constant corrections of Pip's manners at the table, including this absolute knee slapper. Nope, just him talking. Oh man, that that funny. And so Wait, hold on. Is this actually the video? There are almost no critiques in here. It's just some kid saying that things aren't funny without much of an explanation behind why. Was that all I had to do with my video? Did I not need to justify my reasons? Tell me I was just wasting my time when I could have gotten thousands of views doing nothing? Okay, okay, I'm just being a dick. There are some valid criticisms in this video. Towards the end, he complains that the dialogue in this episode relies too heavily on exposition and that the story overall is boring. Now, I don't agree with this point on the story, but I actually do kind of agree on his point about the exposition. There could definitely have been more showing and less telling at certain points in the story. I don't think it ruins the episode at all, but it does hold it back to some degree. But honestly, that seems to be the only big criticism that this video dishes out. Seems like everything else is just like saying that it's not good just because. So unfortunately, I ended up having to do more research into why people don't like this episode. And I think I figured out the problem. Fans of South Park don't like it when an episode does not feature the main cast. Obviously, there are some exceptions to the rule, like Butter's very own episode. But I think in order to pull that off, the character you're focusing on has to earn a spot in the viewer's Hearts, which Pip never has. And so maybe because Pip the episode takes place outside of South Park and it doesn't feature any of the recognizable South Park characters, that makes it a lot harder for people to get into it. At least that's the best of my understanding. But I think that because of that, people are also overlooking the good qualities of the episode that make it so great. It's like the packaging ruins the episode, you know? It's like you're watching it with colored glasses and everything looks like shit with shit colored glasses. But here's the thing. If you are someone that really never gave the episode a chance because of the packaging or whatever, then I hope that this video has at least inspired you to reconsider your feelings for the episode. Or at least consider reconsidering because behind its bizarre packaging and weird storytelling is a legitimately funny episode that is unlike almost anything that South Park has ever done before or since. And I think that makes it a pretty special episode. So if you want to take the blue pill and stay in Haterland, and miss out on what makes this episode good, I'll completely understand. But if you're ready for the truth and you're willing to take the pit pill, well, then I'll see you on the other side. What up? I'm a cold motherfucker like Crow Coffin.